Yami Yaga, thanks very much for talking to us from Gold Sports Software. Um, no I want to take you back to sort of, if you think when you just went to the NHL, to how hockey's been in the last sort of four to five years, what's changed in the whole experience of hockey? I went to the NHL in 1990, so uh, it's, it's a long time. It's, it's 30 years, so everything has changed. The hockey has changed, the world has changed. I was learning to play hockey during the communist years, so, so for us, living in communist countries, uh, there was the to escape to the to the other countries was the only way to do it in sports. So the motivation for us was huge. You know, you you had, you had only one choice. You know, to be a best in the sport and uh, see other countries and you know maybe see the world, or you're stuck in the in, in the country and you're gonna work from six to two every day. So you know, it was extra motivation for us. And since then, everything has changed. You know, uh, we had a that extra motivation than the young kids had it right now. But if you think in terms of how it was when you went there and now off the ice, everything around you, how's that kind of change when you're in the rink? You know, I can compare when I was a kid and when, when I'm right now and I, I see around, uh, you know, it just during the communist years, years, there was only two sports. The top sports were the soccer and was the hockey. So most of the kids, they would play only two sports, nothing else. Uh, now you got millions of sports, you can do anything, you know, you got internet, you got TVs, you know, we didn't have that. Uh, so it was, it was kind of only sports, you know, we came from the school and we just did the sports all the time. You know, now it, you know, the kids had other, other things to do and, you know, it's a lot easier life for them. It's, it's tough for the, for the parents to motivate them to, to do the sport. Um, you said your motivation came from you know, wanting to kind of escape, but once you had gone to the NHL and, and playing through the years, where does the motivation come from then, once you're there, once you're winning? Well, the motivation was uh, you know, the, the basic, uh, to, to make the team. Uh, I, was, I was 18 years old, uh, first European ever played for the team, so they, they didn't really like the communist <laughs> guys, uh, the communist kids, uh, you know, somebody who come from communist countries and even, you know, from Europe and want to take their job. So, uh, you know, it, it wasn't easy and I didn't speak any English. So, I mean, our second language in school was Russian. So, uh, for me, it was a very tough first, first five months in the season. Then, uh, other Czechs got traded from Calgary to, to, to Pittsburgh and all of a sudden I get a life, you know, just like that. You know, I have somebody to speak my own language, you know, somebody who can explain me what the other, other guys saying, you know, what the coach is saying. So, you know, it, it, that was a turning point for me. What about the fans though? How, how were they with you? How did they kind of push you on? Well, you... there, there was another story that there was, I was very popular. So, like I said, I was the first European player to play for the team. So, I. I feel like the Americans, they feel like they, and I was young, so I felt like they, they wanted to help me, they want to help me everywhere, you know, and uh, I felt like I was their kid, so they, so they were so nice to me and, you know, I could, you know, easily I could do anything I want in that city. When you're kind of at the game and with the fans, can you think back or even sort of over the whole career, any times when fans have kind of made that difference to you? And the fans are. Fantastic, you know, you just, you know, you got 20,000 fans screaming for you. So, and when you score a goal, uh, when you're winning, even when you're losing, they support you. So, you know, that's it's, it's a big motivation, that's a big drive. Even if when you're losing, you know, it's, it's, they're helping you a lot. So, and uh, you, know, you could see it if you do something good, you know, they let you know. So, you know, other extra motivation for you to do, to do good for them. What's that feeling like when you step out onto the ice to a building? There's 20,000 people in there. That whole atmosphere. Well, of course, it's, you're kind of nervous, but it's it's also it's responsibility. Plus, you have extra motivation to play for something. You know, you know, if you do something good, they appreciate it. On the other side, if you do something bad, they're gonna blame you. So, uh, you know, it's up and down, but you know, you get the extra extra motivation, extra level to reach it. Currently in the middle of a pandemic, we're playing hockey without fans in most of the building. Like, what, what does that take out of the game? Well, to be honest, I, I didn't play it without a fan, so I don't know how, how, I, how my body gonna take it because, uh, you know, I was, I was always know I wanna, I wanna play for the fans. I, and every, every time I play even check, it was always sold out. So uh, I, I, I don't know how my body gonna react to that. Uh, it's 
probably it's like a practice. Uh, I saw some games. You know, there's no noise when you score a goal. It's sometimes you don't even know. You know, you, you scored a goal. Uh, even if you play home, you play. You feel like on a road because you know when you score a goal, nobody cheering for you when you're on a road. So uh, it's, it's. I cannot really say how I how I'm gonna feel when I'm gonna first time play, but it's of course it's not it's not easy for anybody. You know, I just sports is supposed to do for the fans, and if you if they're not in the arena, it's it's, it's kind of tough. And what about for the fans that kind of they live and they breathe hockey, but they can't come? Of course, the 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 the. The base fans, they're, they're always they're always there for you, and uh, you know it's gonna be tough for them. Uh, you know they still follow, they watch on TV, but it's not the same. You know we miss them here, they probably miss us. Uh, but it, you know it, it's it, I, me personally, I don't really agree with that. Uh, I, I, if I would be in charge, I would open up and I would let it go. Uh, but I'm not in charge, so I understand that there's a lot of people worried about their lives, and there's some groups of people, especially other people, that are in in danger. I understand that, but uh, you know, just to have more patience, you know, uh, sooner or later it's gonna be over. Fans aren't here at the moment, but you said they're such a big part of the game. Like, what, what would you say to them, even though they're having to watch on TV, that they kind of feel that they're still part of this? The fans are. They're 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 funny, you know. You got the you got a lot of fans who who think they know everything. <laughs> the, the all the fans they know they they could be the the, the coaches. They're the best coaches. Uh, they know what to do, you know. And uh, I just want to tell them, you know, we really appreciate them. But they also would have, you know, they should have more patience, you know, with the team. Uh, you know, they're too up and down, you know, when you lose one game, they said they're the worst team and when you win one game, they think that the, we, we are the best team. So, you know, just just have uh, just have more patience. I know it's kind of tough. You follow you follow your team and you want them to do good all the time. But there's no team in the world who can win every game. So, you know, we appreciate these fans, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, I wish they would have a little more patience and uh, they would trust Trust the team that you know they they also wanted to do the, what's what's best for the team. Sometimes it just it just doesn't doesn't show right away.